In this video, I'll go over mechanism energy cubes and the mechanism multi-block energy storage. I'll also talk about the mechanism energy cables and the energy tablet. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I try to put out helpful content to help you with mods of all sorts, so subscribe and comment down below if you want to know anything about mechanism or any other mod, uh, and I'll try to make a video about it to help you. When I make these videos, I assume you can use JEI, but if you can't, go ahead and check that iCard because it kind of explains how to use JEI. Um, a lot of mod packs change how the recipes go, so I don't like to show recipes so much because if you're playing an expert pack, there's going to be different recipes. If you find anything helpful, please leave a like, and now let's get into learning about mechanisms energy storage methods. So first, let's start with this energy tablet. So it's kind of a portable battery. Uh, it can store 400,000 uh, Fe, but that's the default. Uh, some mod packs change how much storage and how much generation mods have, so it can vary. It'll tell you in the tooltip right there. Uh, this one can store 400,000 Fe. So let's start with these energy cubes. So they store less per block than the multi-block options will, but you don't require multi-block. You can just have one block, and then that'll store energy. So let's start with the basic energy cube. So by default, it can store 160 million Fe, which is the same as RF. So they're interchangeable if I use RF or Fe. Uh, those are interchangeable. RF used to be kind of what most people used, but now some mods use Fe because that's forge energy, and forge is the mod loader that these run on. So it's a more generalized option. So like I said, uh, the basic can hold 1.6 million Fe. It can transfer at 1.6 thousand Fe a tick input and output. And the basic cables have a transfer rate of 3.2 thousand Fe a tick um, per, per cable. So they also store that much. So if you have, you know, 100 cables, you can store 320 thousand Fe in the cables themselves, not even including the cells. Moving on to the advanced energy cube. So this one can store 6.4 million Fe. It can transfer at 6.4 thousand Fe a tick, input and output, and the cables have a capacity and a transfer rate of 51.2 thousand Fe a tick. Next we have the Elite Energy Cube. This can store 25.6 million Fe. It can transfer at 25.6 thousand Fe a tick, input and output, and the cable has a transfer rate and a capacity of 409.6 thousand Fe a tick. Finally, we have the Ultimate Energy Cube. So this can store 102.4 million Fe. It can transfer 102.4 thousand Fe a tick, input and output, and the cables have a capacity and a transfer rate of 3.27 million Fe a tick. Now, the interesting thing about these cubes is that they can be upgraded with the tier installers. So you just shift, right click a tier installer on it, and I just went from basic to advanced to elite, and that's ultimate. So you can upgrade these in place without having to craft. So next up, let's get to the induction matrix. So each induction matrix requires one induction cell and one induction provider minimum. So the smallest you can make it is this three by three by four. Basically, the induction cells store the power and the induction providers allow it to be transferred in and out of the thing. So in order to have any transfer rate you need, a provider and a transfer rate is useless if you don't have anywhere to store it so you need the cell and then if you close it up you'll get those red particles and that'll show you that it's good now it tells you how much you're storing right here so we're storing 0 fe out of 3.2 giga fe that's billion fe and here's our statistics so as you can see we have a transfer rate of 102.4 thousand fe a tick uh, the dimensions are 4 by 3 by 3 it's got one cell and one provider. This is the smallest, most basic multi-block induction matrix you can have because it's got the two most basic induction cells and providers. You need these induction casings to be surrounding it on all the corners, and then you can have any number of induction ports, however they, like, like the uh, thermal evaporation plant, the ports can't be on the borders. It's usually good to have at least two induction ports because one is for input and the other one's for output. So if you want to be transferring energy, that's the best way to do it. This is a good storage device. You got an input, 
where you put your power in and then you put your power out on this side. So like I said, the small size, 3x3x4, three by three by uh, in any direction, you know, you could have this 3 going this way and 4 going high. It doesn't matter. Um, the biggest size is 18x18x18. 18 by 18 by 18. Now that's exterior, of course, um, but this is basically the biggest size it can get. Um, you know, you want multiple induction ports. To change an induction port from input to output, you just shift right click while the configurator is in one of the configurating options, heat, energy, slurries, infused types, gases, fluids, and items. If you shift right click with it in wrench mode, it'll drop it in the world. Now you don't have to have the same tier of uh, cells and induction providers. You can have any combination of the tiers and it'll still work just fine. Once you get to this one, I have one of each of the blocks in here. So I've got the basics, the advanced, the elites, and the ultimates. And as you can see, when I close this up, it works just fine. You get the red sparkles. This can hold 1.8 trillion FE, and it can transfer 59.9 million FE a tick. So let's talk about the actual things you put in here. So by default, uh, the induction cells store energy. So the basic stores 3.2 giga FE, that's a billion. The advanced does 25.6 giga FE. The elite can store 204.8 giga FE. And the ultimate can each store 1.6 tera FE, which is trillion. The induction providers change the transfer speed. So the basic can do 102.4 thousand FE a tick. The advanced induction provider can do 819.2 thousand FE a tick. The elite induction provider can do 6.55 million FE a tick. And the ultimate induction provider can do 52.42 million FE a tick transfer rate. Now, that's per block. So if you have multiple, it'll multiply by how many you have. But yeah, so that's the basics of that. So if you want to have multiple, if you want to have this entire thing filled with induction cells and then one provider, you could do that. It would take a very long time to fill it up with the energy because it's going to be slow. But if you wanted to do that, you very well could. The induction cells sh should keep their energy when you break them. So it shouldn't be a problem. S same with the energy cubes. If you break them and pick them up and move them somewhere else, they'll keep their energy in them. Um, so don't worry about breaking your multi-block or whatever. If you want to do it efficiently, you can have half induction providers and half induction cells. And then once you start to fill it up, you can slowly get more cells and take out providers and trade them out. That way, you're always filling it up. And then once you have it full of induction cells and one induction provider, then basically you'll have the whole thing full, like the whole battery full, and you won't have to worry about it. If you got any helpful information from this video, please hit the like button down below and let me know what I should cover next. Uh, subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Click here to see my video on mechanism or processing and here to watch a video that YouTube thinks is the best for you. Pick one, they're going to be both good. Subscribe right here and I'll see you next time.